Hey everyone, Violet here and today we are going to talk about this new place that we moved into because we have been having some kind of interesting, um, possibly paranormal experiences. So I'm going to tell you what's been going on and I would love to hear your, your thoughts in the comments below so do let me know what you think. And um, also this is going to kind of be like a two part video. So we'll start with talking about what we've been experiencing, what we've been noticing, and some of the history, or at least what we know so far, about the place that we're living. And after that, we're gonna talk about warding and protecting and cleansing your home. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that I'm doing in our current place to um, hopefully cleanse the energy a bit, hopefully balance things out. Um, but yeah, we might be dealing with something possibly even a bit more intense than just like cleansing old stale or even negative energy um we might be dealing with a haunting here okay so the first thing that we really noticed was that arthur who is our toddler he's almost two he's our son um he started waking up at a similar time every night kind of around 9 p.m or 10 p.m or so and um he would be crying in this way that it was like he was totally inconsolable. Usually, if he wakes up, I can settle him pretty quickly, I can feed him, you know, whatever. Um, on the rare occasion, maybe he wants to be up and he plays for a little bit, and then eventually he will want to go back to sleep. But this was different. This was like night terrors, and in none of the other places have we experienced it. Um, so I was looking up night terrors, you know, and uh, they are common. For kids and it was saying you know if something um, some drastic changes are happening then that could certainly be a cause for it so moving could certainly be something like that um, but it would get to the point where he would just be crying so hard like so terrified we'd have to turn on all the lights we'd have to really redirect him almost pull him out of what sort of felt like a um, almost like sleepwalking like his eyes were open but he was just so terrified so um, that was interesting and I think it didn't quite start hitting me that it's possible it could be like a paranormal disturbance or some sort of haunting something maybe he's picking up on that we're not or maybe something that's messing with him that we're not until some other like smaller things started happening with us so I'll talk about those but I also want to tell you about this place that we're living and uh, what its deal is so it is an old Victorian house um, which is pretty cool. It's got some witchy vibes. I will definitely be giving you a tour. But the area of the house, so the Victorian house, um, it's multi-level and it's split up into different units and different apartments. And our space, it's kind of a smaller space, um, perfect for us, but it is the old servants' quarters. So it is where um, the cooks would be pre preparing the food for the rest of the house. It's, um, I, I almost wonder if the servants lived there. I also don't know like what the actual arrangement with the servants were. I don't know how well they were treated. I don't really know about the like old owners of the place or anything like that, but that is where we're living. We're living in the servants area. So keep that in mind. Now, some of the other things I started noticing were that um, doors wouldn't fully maybe stay shut or they would shut when they were open. So particularly, I'm thinking of the front door would often just randomly open. We would be like very certain that we had shut it um, and it kind of goes out to a hallway before it goes outside. So it's like our cats would escape into that outdoor, not outdoor, but that hallway towards the front front door. Um, and then the other one was the door to the bathroom, which is kind of in line with that one. So I almost wonder if there's some sort of like energy flowing through or something. It would um, randomly close and I'm still dealing with that. Um, so I think we've got the front door a little bit more secure and it stopped doing that quite as much. But the bathroom door to me, it just like keeps opening and closing. Anyway, so uh, that was something I was noticing and this is still happening, but out of the corner of my eye, I see sort of flickers or shadows and especially when it's very dark I've noticed sort of like glowing almost like orbs and um, I've seen a light color one more of like a golden white one and I've seen a red color one 
which uh, we'll get to that one very soon because I, I kind of wonder if we picked up on what that might be coming from. So yeah, then two things happened. These two things felt bigger. These two things felt a bit more terrifying. So the first one is that Lars and I heard a disembodied growl. It was something that happened after we put Arthur to bed. Um, you know, we were hanging out kind of in the living room area and then we both just heard this growl and I don't know how else to explain it. We were wondering if it's possible there was a dog outside, but it felt like it was in the space with us and our cats reacted to it too. So that was pretty interesting. So the second thing was, um, he and I were hanging out in the bedroom and I've been having the feeling more so in this place than any other place I've lived in of covering up the television. Because if you think about a television, it's like a very big black mirror, right? Which can be a portal, um, which can be very connected with um, many types of energy. And I have been covering it with um, a cloth. Okay, so that just intuitively already, it was like, okay, we need to keep this television covered, which is interesting. Um, but anyway, we were hanging out in the room, the television was not covered, and it randomly turned on. And we were like, well, where's the remote? Did one of us like bump the remote? Where is it? It's never done that before. We've had this TV for a long time. And um, turns out the remote was just like in another room, sitting on a surface, totally untouched. So I don't know about that. Let me know what you think about that. I know that, I know that spirits can mess with technology. So yeah, so that was pretty interesting. So I decided to pull some tarot on what was going on and specifically I was wanting to pull for what spirit was waking Arthur up or what energy or just what was it. So uh, here's what we got. Okay, so I just pulled some cards to try to communicate with this spirit or whatever it might be. And first of all, I asked if there was a presence in the house um, that, you know, perhaps we're picking up on, and I got the Queen of Wands. So, I found that really interesting, very specific, like this feels like a person, it feels like a female energy maybe, um, and maybe there's something like very strong, like energetically, that's like tying her to this place. So since we're living in the servant's quarters, I then asked like, is this a servant? You know, is this someone who um, worked in this house? And I got the Hierophant reversed. So this felt very specific because the Hierophant is about hierarchy, but um, it is reversed. So it kind of felt like, okay, maybe this isn't a servant, but it's someone like higher up in the hierarchy, you know? So I asked, you know, like, why are you here? Um, and I've got the Eight of Cups, which made me feel like, um, maybe they want to move on but there's like something sad or there's something that's kind of like pulling them to this place holding them here something sorrowful but like they at the same time there's like a desire to let it go um so then i asked lars like okay well what what else do you want to ask the spirit he wanted to know like have you been waking up our son and he got the five of wands which feels like yes, and it kind of feels like it's in sort of like an aggressive way, which would make sense with how he's reacting. And that was like, why? You know, why are you doing that? And we got the two of swords, which felt kind of like, um, I want to be seen. I want to change, something like that. I want to be seen and I want to change. So um, I asked, how can I help you? Or how can we help you? And look what we got. It's just super creepy. Lars was like getting chills at this point. We got the devil in reverse. And I wasn't really sure exactly how to see that. I was like, is something holding you here? Is there some sort of dark presence or something that's holding you here? Um, that's what I asked next. And I got the two of wands, which made me feel like, no, um, she's free to go she can make the choice to go but i almost feel like actually this might mean um that she needs like 
cleansing or to be cleared of whatever this is, whatever sorrowful thing is that's holding her back. Like she doesn't want to move on and still have this with her, but she can't fully let it go yet. She hasn't been able to do that. And so I'm wondering about doing some sort of like energetic cleansing, something maybe to help, help her heal, you know? That's what I'm getting here. So let's see how this continues. <laughs> So next I talked to a really good friend of mine who is also a tarot reader, also an intuitive, but also has experience with mediumship and experiences with spirits, spirits and a lot of experience with haunted spaces. Um, and um, that's Brooms. <laughs> so Brooms and I had a wonderful discussion about this and Brooms was already able to like tap into the energy of the place and pick up on some stuff. And it's very interesting because some of the like first two beings figures that she picked up on was um, a woman, a lady of the house who was very angry, um, very like negative energy, very stubborn, seemed like maybe she's staying in this space out of spite or something like that, which I automatically was like, oh my gosh, I think I pulled cards on her right and brooms was suggesting that perhaps the red light that i've been seeing was her she also said that i'd probably end up seeing a full-bodied apparition here i've never seen that in my life um i'm terrified to see that i will let you all know if i do um but i think that i can't remember i'll ask her but i can't remember if she was thinking it would be any of the figures in particular, but the other one that she mentioned to me was a servant woman who lived there who's a bit more warm, more kind, seemed to perhaps have children of her own, seemed like maybe some children's spirits were there as well that um, perhaps would be playing and interacting with Arthur. So it's interesting, after we talked about this, there was a time where Arthur woke up kind of in the early, early morning, late at night. I was in a half sleep so kind of dreamlike and it sounded to me like he was talking to someone and I felt like I could hear like a woman responding um that one felt kinder so I'm, I'm almost wondering if that was the spirit and maybe this is the one with the glowing white light but it seems like the spirit might be very connected to the the lady the harsher one the more angry one um that's what broomstick was picking up on for sure so I really appreciated her help with it and her like insights and her intuitive um, like seeing of it and understanding of it because it helped make it a bit more clear for me. All right, so now I feel like we've gotten a better grasp perhaps of what we're dealing with here. And I will say that I haven't done a full, full cleansing, full protection, full warding of the space yet. There are some things I've done already and that was um, cleansing and protecting around my altars specifically. So I've already done that. I've had my own methods for doing that. Um, I put a, a small broom on the door already, a cinnamon broom. That's for clearing the energy of the space as anyone walks in and out of the door. It just naturally does that. So um, that's something wonderful to do um, <laughs> if you want to put a broom on your door. I just have this little one. So that works really, really well. And um, I've also placed some sort of spell pouches in each room, each one for a different intention for each space. That's what I've done so far. But I'm going to take you through some of the things that I'm going to do now. I'm not going to talk about all of my protection and wording things that I'm going to do just because, it, again, talking to brooms, um, I've learned that that's something you should keep some of that to yourself, some of the details to yourself so that only you are aware of some of the protective, protective stuff that you've done. So do keep that in mind if you do this to your house. So let's get into some of the protection, some of the wording, some of the cleansing stuff that we are about to do and i hope that this works i hope it makes a difference um and as we're talking about this let me know if there's anything in particular that you like to do with your home and if you try out any of these techniques let me know how they work for you and let's get to it We are going to do a few cleansing, 
blessing, um, protection type rituals today. And um, mostly we're going to focus elementally. So my plan for the first one is to use uh, fire and air. And I'm going to do this by burning a few different herbs in a cauldron. And um, this both will represent, you know, fire, the burning of the herbs, and with air, the smoke that comes out. This is going to be mostly for cleansing and clearing the space and getting out any sort of negative energy, removing those sorts of past shadows, past attachments. And I'm going to be using mugwort, eucalyptus, and rose. And in doing this, you can also choose to use a feather. I think that that will really connect me to the element of air and um, send that smoke into all of the places, all of the cracks, all the areas and you can also visualize like white light or golden light as you're doing this pouring over all of the spaces and don't forget to open up the doors or windows and let that energy out let it have somewhere to go then secondly we are going to work with the elements of water and earth so I've got these crystals these selenite crystals these were a gift from my good friend Bean, <laughs> and um, by the way, I'm going to link both Bean and Brooms' channels down below in the description so you can check that out. We've got Moonlit Bean, we've got Broomstick. Um, they've been very influential on me being able to cleanse and clear my home, so all of the gratitude their way. Um, but yes, so she gave me these selenite crystals. Three are from Bean, and actually one is from Priestess of Wonderland, so I'm going to link her as well. This is like a group effort, I guess, this cleansing and, and clearing. So please check out all of my dear, dear, witchy, intuitive friends. I love them so, so much, and thank you all so much for helping me out. Um, but anyway, we're going to use these four selenite crystals to grid the home. I'm going to put one in each corner, but beforehand, I'm going to spray them with this protective spray. This was a gift from Bean. She made it especially for me for this time. We sat and had a little witchy date and um, yeah, she made that for me. So I'm going to spray that onto the crystals to help set this intention, as well as speak the intentions to them, visualize it, visualize really creating a safe space, um, protecting the space, allowing positive and healing energies through keeping other energies out, just, you know, really um, specifying what it is that I want them to do for me. And again, I'll put them in the four corners of my house. So this is connecting to earth with the crystals and water with the spray. I'm seeing this part of the journey as being um, more so about bringing those positive and protective energies in. So it's like the first part with the fire and air was cleansing out and now we're bringing in and we're setting intentions and we're solidifying the uh, intentions and giving the intentions homes, which those selenite crystals will definitely be homes for that. Create a sort of um, a sort of bubble around the space, if you will, through all those four corners. Um, and then next I am going to take um, black salt, which is a mixture of incense, um, ashes, salt, and intentions. This was made from by Bean and given to me. Um, so I'm going to use that also in a shell and sprinkle that around the perimeter of the space. So this again is connecting to water with the shell and earth, you know, with the ashes as well as the salt kind of connecting to the sea as well. And um, that's going to create a really nice protective barrier around the space. Um, so all of these are fantastic ways to cleanse and clear, protect your home. Um, but I do want to mention too, it's something you can keep up regularly. It's something you can refresh. It's something you can keep going back to. I definitely plan to do that in this space. But yeah, those are my, um, little practices that we're doing here. So let me know, what are you doing? Are you doing anything with your home, cleansing and clearing? Have you had any sort of weird energies or experiences in any places that you have lived? How did you handle those? Um, this is probably a first step and I will let you know how it works. 
let you know if it starts to feel a bit better here. Um, I do think that overall the energy is good. I think that um, there's just some, some lingering stuff and it's stuff it's good to refresh. It's good to really learn how to deal with those things. So thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video and so much love. I'll see you soon.